So it's an exciting video that I want to make today because I'm going to talk about some of our own research. And it's always exciting to get the chance to talk about what we've been doing here in York. And the research that we've been doing is important in surgery. And what we're trying to do is develop new chemical tools, new drugs to help surgeons make patients recover better. Now, you might be interested how we got involved in this whole area of research in the first place. And really, it all started because of this person, Sam. Sam's my partner, and one of the things about Sam is that he has cystic fibrosis. And about three, four years ago, his lung function became really depressed with the cystic fibrosis, about 20% lung function. And at that point, one of the only things available for cystic fibrosis patients is the option of a lung transplant. And Sam was really lucky, he went to Newcastle and he was able to have a lung transplant. And I spent a lot of time up in Newcastle, both before and after the surgery had taken place. Uh, this is actually a photograph of Sam just after surgery. And as a chemist, you go into this environment and it's really interesting. You look at Sam here, you can see the oxygen line going in to keep his lungs oxygenated. You can see the heart monitor. You can see a neckline going in. And you can see a whole load of different drugs going into the patient. And this is absolutely fascinating for a chemist. What are those drugs? What are they doing? How are they helping the patient to recover? Of course, if you spend too long asking this kind of question, you end up with a very grumpy patient. Um, so I had to balance my time, but I spent a lot of time there talking to surgeons about what all the drugs do. And one of the drugs that I learnt about up in Newcastle was heparin. Heparin is used during surgery as an anticoagulant. It helps keep the blood thin while the patient is being operated on. However, when the patient goes back to the ward to recover, they don't want anticoagulated thin blood. They want to begin to clot. So one of the drugs used by surgeons right at the end of surgery is a heparin rescue agent, something designed to remove the heparin. And surgeons use protamine. And protamine causes a number of problems in patients. In some cases, it causes anaphylactic shock, in a number of patients, you have to use it very, very cautiously in small amounts and that can lead to problems with heparin rebound, where you don't bind to all the heparin, you don't remove all the heparin from the blood and then 12, 24 hours after surgery, the heparin comes back, has its anticoagulant effect, the patient begins to bleed and they need to go back into surgery. So managing blood clotting is massively important for surgeons. And I sat there at Sam's bedside thinking, ah, we can do this. I need to get back to the lab. Because heparin, chemically, is a very interesting molecule. It's a highly negatively charged polymer, a polysaccharide made of sugars. It's the most negatively charged biological molecule. And one of the things we'd been developing a whole range of expertise in was binding negatively charged biomolecules, particularly DNA, actually. And all the things we'd learnt working with DNA, we suddenly realised we could potentially apply to heparin. And our approach is kind of unique. If you want to bind heparin, there's two ways of doing it. You can use a really small molecule, something like a typical drug. But the problem is they don't bind heparin very strongly. Or you can use a really big molecule, like a polymer or like protamine itself. But the problem is they tend to have side effects and toxicity problems. What we wanted to do was to harness the best of small molecules and the best of big molecules. And we can do that using a nanotechnology method called self-assembly. We wanted to design a small molecule which assembles into a big molecule so that it can bind the heparin when it's assembled, but then once its job is complete, it disassembles back into small molecules so it doesn't have a toxicity problem. How do we do that? This is what our molecule looks like. It's quite a small molecule. On the right hand side, you can see a positively charged region. This has been designed and optimized for binding to negatively charged heparin. On the left hand side, you can see a long hydrocarbon chain. That is water hating, hydrophobic. And that part of the molecule will mean that when you put this compound in water, it wants to self assemble into a ball and linking the hydrophobic part and the hydrophilic part, we have a degradable linkage that can be broken down in vivo. So, 
My team here in York, which was experimentally led by Stephen Bromfield, he's an incredibly talented PhD student, went about making these compounds and studying whether they could bind heparin. And he found that they had really effective heparin binding, not only in water, you could add salt to that, the heparin binding got even better, and even in human serum and plasma, these compounds still had effective binding to heparin. We work with an amazingly talented computational chemist, Sabrina Prickle, at Trieste in Italy, and what she can do is model what's happening. So now we can visualize the way in which our molecule is self-assembled into a nanostructure. You can see it there, that blue-colored ball, and you can see it binding to the heparin polymer chain. So she gives us a real insight into what's going on in this system using her computational methods. We also collaborate with Marcelo Calderon, a chemist in Berlin, in Germany, who helps us to characterize the binding processes and understand when we have serum present, what's happening to our assemblies. And finally, we work with Jerry Turnbull, who's a heparin biologist, specializes in heparin, and he's able to test whether our compounds can actually reverse the effect of heparin in plasma. So Jerry takes blood plasma and he sees how long it takes to clot. He then adds heparin and it no longer clots. You have the anticoagulancy effect. We then add our heparin rescue agent. We completely reverse the clotting effect. We also know that our molecules have perfect degradation profiles. So they assemble into their nanostructures and bind to heparin and if they've bound to heparin they're perfectly stable. If however we use just a lot of this drug and there's some that isn't bound to heparin is it going to hang around in the body and cause a toxic effect? Well the answer is no because if our nanostructure doesn't find any heparin to bind it degrades. So really we think that this approach we're taking could revolutionize the way in which surgeons treat patients after surgery has taken place in order to remove the heparin. A small molecule with all the advantages of small molecules, perfect synthesis, well-defined structures, easy to make, that assembles into a big nanostructure that can show really strong binding to heparin, really high affinity, even in human plasma. But if we use too much of it, it degrades and disassembles back into small fragments which won't have toxicity in the patient in the long term. We call this approach to achieve high affinity binding in a biological system a self-assembled multivalent approach. Multivalent means many points of binding. There are many points of interaction between our nanostructures and heparin. That's why we get the strong binding. And we've taken to calling self-assembled multivalency S-A-M-U-L, Samuel the Samuel approach to binding. And we've done that, of course, in honor of Sam, who inspired this area of research in the first place during his transplant. Of course, there's a lot of work still to be done with this system. We have to go and do some proper in vivo studies in animal models. We have to try to stabilize our structures even more in human plasma because the bloodstream is a highly challenging environment with lots of flow processes that our structures have to resist and lots of other factors in there that can interfere with our self-assembly step. So we want to stabilize our structures even further. And we want to work on our structures to make sure we've really minimized the toxicity of our nanostructures. But that work is in hand here in York. It's really exciting times. We're proud to have published this work in Chemical Science, one of the premier chemistry journals in the world. And it's really great to have the chance to tell you a little bit about some of the exciting research that we're doing here in York. To finish the story with Sam, he was fine in his surgery. He didn't need our heparin rescue agent. The lung transplant team did an absolutely fantastic job. Three years after surgery, touching wood, his lung function is still well over 100% and stable, and he's doing extremely well. So it's remarkable what medicine can do already. He's a testament to the skill of the surgeons and the amazing chemistry of the transplant drugs. If we could do just a little bit, to make the surgeon's life easier, then ultimately we'd feel incredibly proud of that. Thanks a lot.